Is this thing on? Yep. <laughs> My name is Jason McCarty. I'm a staff architect with uh, the Storage and Availability Business Unit here at VMware. And I'd like to welcome everybody to today's very brief uh, Facebook Live where I'm going to talk about two node direct connect with vSAN and 6.5. If you'll notice here, I've got a, a depiction of vSAN two node direct connect before 6.5, where we have our two hosts here. I've got, and I, for the purpose of simplicity, I didn't connect my VMK0 management NIC over to vCenter, but I have it listed here. Got my witness running somewhere else, vCloud Air maybe, maybe in a vCloud Air network partner or, or something of that nature. And then from a connectivity perspective, I have VMK2, which is my vSAN data network, connected through this expensive 10 gig switch up to VMK1, which is our vSAN tagged interface on our witness appliance. Now, this is a little bit complicated, not really, but in the grand scheme of things, if I'm, let's say, using all flash in my two-node vSAN, I have to have a 10 gig network back here. Now, if I'm deploying, let's say, all flash vSAN to, let's say, 50 stores, if I'm a retailer, if I'm deploying it to 100 stores, 1,000 stores or whatnot, it really gets to the point where this 10 gig switch is pretty expensive, especially as I roll this out to store after store after store. So what we did in 6.5, is we remove this requirement. In 6.5, we now have the capability of, this is my vSAN network, directly connecting between nodes. I can even do vMotion here, directly connected. And then what I do is, these are tagged as, as vSAN traffic. I have vSAN traffic tagged here. But in 6.5, we now have, have the capability of tagging an alternate interface, VMK1, on host one and host two in this particular case, as witness traffic. What this does is this removes the requirement for that super expensive 10 gig switch. By doing this, we're splitting data traffic with metadata traffic specific to vSAN as far as ownership of objects either on host one or host two. A lot of customers have asked for this. Uh, I have a, I've talked to a customer just the other day and they were talking about, about removing this requirement and they didn't know that we had, we had brought it about in 6.5. In fact, if you're running 6.0 update three or 6.0 update four, I wanna say that came out in around November of last year. We now support that on those platforms as well. And we don't require an RPQ for either of those. So with 6.2 update three or higher, as well as 6.5, we can now directly connect two nodes, give that high-speed network. This could be one gig if we're using hybrid, or it could be 10 gig with, with all flash. To remove that requirement, that particular additional cost when it comes to, to vSAN. So uh, do you guys, uh, those of you that are helping me here in, the, uh, here in the office, any particular questions that have come up as far as the, uh, uh, any comments that I can answer? No questions? Okay. What are you talking about? What am I talking about? I'm, again, I'm talking about vSAN 6.5, two node with a new direct connect capability, which we introduced in 6.5, but is also available in 6.0, update three or better. There's one question. Says, okay. Can the witness be on a different vCenter? Can the witness be on a different vCenter? No, actually the, the witness has to be within the same vCenter. It's not part of the cluster that these two hosts are part of, the vSAN cluster only contain these, contains these two hosts, but the witness itself is going to be either in another data center managed by the same vCenter, or it can be in, a, in another cluster, but it's not going to be in the same cluster. Now, with that being said, uh, the witness, again, can be in vCloud Air. I'm running two new uh, vSAN with Direct Connect I have since March or May of last year, and my witness is running in vCloud Air. And I've got actually a pretty good uh, guide on storagehub.vmware.com. Uh, that details the process of, of doing that all in one guide. All right, another question? Yep, we have a couple more. One is, what is the latency of the witness? What is the latency? So in a, in a two node configuration, as opposed to a stretch cluster config, we'll just cover two nodes specifically. This latency requirement here between each of the nodes and the witness itself is 500 milliseconds round trip time. 
Now, the amount of bandwidth required is really dependent on the number of components that we have on the hosts. And when I say components, if I take a VMDK and I have a mirrored config, uh, FTT of one, I'll have one component here, one component here in the simplest form, really all depending on the size of the component. For every 1,000 components, we require two megabits of connectivity, okay? And the whole reason that, or the, where this particular calculation com comes from and the requirement comes from is the amount of, time, or amount of time it takes to perform that failover from one host to another if I'm bringing a host offline either through maintenance or through a failure. So we have to move all the components from ownership wise from this cluster to this cluster when this host goes offline. And that has to occur within five seconds. Okay, another question? Yeah. Uh, the question is, where is the most preferred placement for the witness? Where is the most preferred? Hmm. Uh, well, as far as connectivity goes, this can be layer three. Again, routed, right? That can be routed. So this witness can be anywhere, provided we have the connectivity. Again, in my particular environment, I'm running my witness in vCloud Air over just a commercial network, nothing enterprise-based. An IPsec VPN up to vCloud Air, been running for five or six months now in that, in that environment. So it's really anywhere that you've got connectivity for vCenter to see the witness, as well as the vSAN tag traffic to talk to the hosts. Okay, another question? That's pretty much so far. Okay. All right, I don't know how far in we are. We're about six minutes in. We've got a little bit more time. Please feel free to ask some questions. I'm, I'm happy to answer them. I'm really excited about this particular solution. I've talked to a, a lot of customers uh, that are looking at two nodes specific for, let's say, remote office, branch office, uh, small financial institutions, uh, retailers. Retailers, this is actually a really big hit with because we don't require um, that, you know, that, that switch any longer for the back end communication. Keep in mind, I also mentioned that, that we can run vMotion over the same, same network, right? Or not over the same network, but over the same direct connect. Now, I actually use in my, my configuration a VDS where I use, I'll say, um, uh, and my, my handwriting's horrible, I apologize. What I'll do is I'll run, I'll run vSAN over NIC0, and I'll run, um, I say NIC0, actually it's, it's two and three, but. I'll run vSAN on the physical NIC2, or my uplink 2, and I'll run vMotion on NIC3. I'll use VDS, which actually is included in vSAN licensing. There's no additional cost there. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll pin vSAN traffic to one, I'll pin vMotion to the other, but I'll make it available if one of these two were to come offline and I have the capability of failing over. Included with that, I'll, I can use, um, network I.O. control, and using network I.O. control, I can carve up shares between these and I can guarantee that my vSAN data network has more capability uh, bandwidth-wise than the vMotion network. So I never get to the point where I'm starving storage as I'm moving a VM from one host to another. A couple more questions. The first okay. one is, how many VMs can I run on this two-node configuration? Is it limited to 25 like the robo license? And the second question is, is there a way to deploy these two node configurations at scale if I have 200 sites? Okay, good two questions. I'll answer them independently. So the first question is, how many VMs can I run? Currently today, we have a limit of, or a recommended maximum configuration of 200 VMs per host. Now in a two node configuration, it's a little bit different in that we wanna be able in the event of maintenance or a failure, run everything on the opposite side. So with that being said, you probably on a two node configuration at, at absolute maximum would only probably run 100 VMs on, on each, a 50-50 distribution. That way when we bring one offline, then we have space for the additional 100, right? So that kind of aligns with, with that 200. Uh, again, really depends on the use case, depends on the hardware, uh, as far as what's a good fit specific to that, uh, uh, that solution. Now, with that being said, how do I deploy this at scale? If you look at storagehub.vmware.com, storagehub you also look at uh, code.vmware.com. I've got a couple scripts that have, I've started to release. I've got a couple more underway very, very shortly. Got, uh, one that I, or a couple that I released last month or earlier this month uh, is one that deploys our witness. Now it's a PowerShell C or Power CLI script that you go and simply enter all of your information specific to your IPs, your gateways, your uh, authentication and everything. It will deploy that witness appliance 
register it to vCenter, and make it available to be added to a cluster. I also have another script <clears throat> that will give you the opportunity of, let's say this witness fails, you have another witness that you're ready to add, you run this script, and it will say, get rid of the old in the config and replace it with a new. So those are just a couple. I've got another one coming very shortly that will actually automate this process of tagging this NIC. One thing I did forget to mention specific to how we tag these, tagging vSAN on, on VMK2 can be done, and also on, on the witness, can be done through the vSphere web client. But the, the witness tagging we're not exposing within the web client today. To do that, you have to, have to actually drop to a uh, to an ESX CLI command. Question? One more question. Is there a way to recover the data when one node and the witness fails? Ooh, that's a complicated one. I don't know if we're going to have enough time for that today. I will say, though, that that fortunately, and I've been working with Cormac Hogan and, and Pony O'Riordan here this week, Cormac published a couple blog posts just this week on multiple failures in a two-node or stretch cluster configuration. So I would highly recommend CormacHogan.com uh, to, to get a more detailed answer to that particular question. That's okay. pretty much it so far. Okay, well, we're right about time. So my name is Jason McCarty um, here at, at uh, VMware headquarters in Palo Alto. I really appreciate everybody taking the time and I appreciate the interactive questions. Uh, hope everybody got a lot out of it. I want to make sure that if, if you're on Twitter, you need to follow VMware vSAN. And also, my name is Jace McCarty. You can find me on Twitter, Jace McCarty. Please feel free to reach out to me or reach out to anybody here if you want to know more about 2Node Direct Connect or just vSAN in general because we're, we're happy to talk to you about it.